have seen how a strain gauge is made up of, how it is fixed in a piece, a base metal, and um, uh, how the strain is transduced and uh, how to fix the strain gauges in a bridge network and so on. But now, uh, for a displacement measurement, how to use a strain gauge? That's what I am explaining now. That is, now if you want to measure a displacement, give the displacement to a cantilever, for example, cantilever end, it's fixed end, this is the free end. So give the displacement at the free end, so it will deform. So by using this cantilever, what you are achieving, the displacement signal is converted into a strain signal. That is what is indicated in the signal flow diagram. This is a signal flow diagram where the cantilever is shown here, first uh, transducer, uh, converting the displacement or transducing displacement D into epsilon strain. So afterwards, then now the strain is picked up by the uh, strain gauge as resistance change. That will form one of the arms of a strain gauge bridge circuit. So by using the strain now, that is displacement converted into strain, this strain is converted into a resistance change which forms part of a uh, bridge network. So now it is, uh, the whole thing is uh, our carrier frequency amplifier, we have got oscillator giving a high frequency uh, carrier signal and this is uh, the our uh, strain is our input signal and resistance change correspondingly, you will have the uh, output voltage EO from the bridge, EO from the bridge and that is being amplified, this is a modulated signal, it is being amplified and the amplified one goes to the phase sensitive demodulator and then uh, through low pass, low pass filter we get a voltage output. Now this voltage is calibrated, E is calibrated in terms of displacement. So you find the, uh, first what we do, in th uh, this is a AC excitation, it is for AC excitation. AC current excitation for the bridge network because oscillator gives uh, near about 5 kilohertz uh, frequency signal. It is used to uh, excite the strain gauge, strain gauge bridge. So that is uh, now here strain gauge bridge is all the four are, all the four will be uh, from the uh, resistance, the pure resistances. We can either uh, excite the bridge network by AC or DC. So this is excitation. If you use a DC excitation, it is simple circuit. Again, we use a cantilever to, dis, uh, to uh, transduce displacement into strain and this strain goes into uh, the strain gauge as resistance change. That strain gauge will be forming a part of a bridge network and that bridge network uh, excited with a, a, DC, a DC voltage. That, that output voltage EO is amplified in a DC amplifier. Now DC amplifier from operational amplifier, we have got uh, many uh, DC amplifiers without any drift problem. Such a DC amplifier we can use and magnify this voltage and finally you get a voltage output that will be calibrated by giving known displacements. That is the calibration. Here also by giving known displacement, calibrate the voltage output and later on you may have the curve like this. This is a displacement versus voltage, voltage output of the uh, voltage output at the end of the instrument that is carrier frequency amplifier output voltage. The, so it may be coming somewhat like this. So of, uh, by giving known displacement, you plot it. After you plot it, later on, you give unknown displacement to the cantilever end. Previously, first for calibration, you give deform it by using a dial gauge. So dial gauge gives a known displacement. Plot this curve. Then uh, this cantilever, at this cantilever end, you give the unknown motion and that motion you can, um, uh, from the voltage, you can get, you can, you can get the correct displacement, correct displacement. That's how the uh, strain gauge is made use of for measurement of displacement. So this is what we, uh, what we concern, what we learnt about regarding how to use this resistance for the purpose of displacement measurement. Next uh, passive element is, we uh, already seen uh, that uh, resistance, inductance and capacitance can be used to transduce the displacement signal into electrical voltage. So naturally next one will be variable inductance transducer, where inductance is made use of to measure the displacement. Now the inductance is uh, used in three forms. Uh, uh, that is to change the self inductance of a coil is a, or mutual inductance between two coils and then reluctance that is resistance for magnetic uh, uh, lines to flow. Whatever the resistance that is called reluctance. The reciprocal of uh, resist, uh, reluctance is called permeance. Sometimes it is also known as permeance pickup. American fir firms some, uh, some of them call, call it as permeance pickup. So these are the three ways in which the inductance is made use of. 
So first we take uh, the self inductance. It is also sometimes called inductance, simply inductance pickup, self inductance or simply inductance pickup, inductance pickup. This is also colloquially used inductance pickup. It means that there are, for example, there are two coils in one, in, one instrumentation of uh, with inductance pickup, there are two coils. Each coil is a uh, winding yeah, on a, magne on a mag uh, magnetic material and um, uh, so two such coils are arranged. Your displacement x i is given to a flag. Flag is ma made up of magnetic material. This is a magnetic material, magnetic material. Flag is made up of magnetic material. So when the flag is at the middle of these two coils, for example, one coil may be 8 uh, mm diameter and say 11 mm, uh, 11 mm length, uh, typical uh, um, inductance coil. So two such coils are arranged with the flag in between. When the flag is at the middle position, the inductance of these two coils will be same. So the reluctance or uh, the impedance Z1 and Z2, both will be equal. Now they are these two coils are connected in the, say this is a carrier frequency average comma amplifier unit is nothing but carrier frequency amplifier carrier frequency amplifier. So it is connected. So you get the excitation. So it is uh, somewhat like this in the bridge network Z1 and Z2 will form adjacent arms of a AC bridge of an AC bridge. The other two arms can be pure resistances. So uh, connected to the, uh, you can connect it to uh, um, uh, the uh, carrier frequency amplifier and if you will get the, uh, you can get the reading here, you can get the reading of the amplifier that is output voltage. Similar this, it is similar to the signal flow diagram. Yeah. Instead of, uh, instead of cantilever, uh, you can say flag, flag is used and then the inductive pickups. Uh, say displacement we give to a flag in terms of this, if we call it, this is you call it AC bridge, all the things, all the other things will remain same as it is in AC uh, carrier frequency amplifier. So this is one form of uh, using the self inductance pickup. That is, when the magnet, when the flag is at the middle, the inductance uh, of these both the coils will be same. When the flag moves nearer to, say, coil one, then inductance of coil one is more, and to the same extent, the inductance in coil two is reduced. So it's opposite effects. When the flag moves, in their own in one coil increase, in the other coil decrease to the same extent. Hence, opposite effects are connected in adjacent arms of a bridge network, what you have learnt already under bridge network. So this is a flag type. Another type is we can use a core. The flag itself may, may be made in terms of core and it is positioned at the middle of a hollow cylindrical inductive coil. That is, it is made up of one coil and with a centre tapping. With the centre tapping you find, then the, from centre tapping to one end, we have got one coil, Z1. Uh, with the impedance Z1, then uh, from the middle point to the other end of the coil, we have got the um, uh, coil uh, equivalent to coil 2 and with a uh, impedance of Z2. So now when the magnetic core is at the middle, we find magnetic material distributed equally to both the coils. So impedance Z1 and Z2 will be same and if we move coil by giving Xi displacement, Xi is the input signal same as displacement with, because it is a transducer for measuring displacement. So when you give the displacement here, suppose we move from left to right to some small x, of, of course the displacement is limited within this uh, length of the total coil. So if we slightly move, what will happen? Uh, then inductance in uh, coil 2 will be more than the inductance, that is the inductance in coil 2 is increased to, um, and uh, to the same extent it is reduced in the coil 1. So it is similar effect, but here we have a core moving inside a hollow cylindrical constructions. So uh, physical construction is different here, instead of two separate coils, it is made in hollow cylindrical construction and it have a core. So with this again Z1 and Z2 opposite effects for a given motion, they are connected in adjacent arms and then other two arms can be uh, resistances. So again we connect to AC supply and take output, this output actually is given to, is will form part of the carrier frequency amplifier. The second way of uh, using the inductance pickup is uh, mutual inductance. We have seen earlier the self inductance, now mutual inductance. And it has got a speci specific name, such transducers, one such famous name, famous name is LVDT, Linear Variable Differential Transformer. So it is very well known uh, in measurements, LV, the people simply call LVDT. 
right the construction details are shown here in the figure here so you have got a magnet this is a magnetic core made up of magnetic material a core magnetic uh, made up of magnetic material we will simply call magnetic core so it is positioned at the middle it the construction is same as uh, more or less similar to our self inductance with the core uh, we the, here also you will have a, a hollow cylinder but here you have three coils one primary coil and two secondary coils in earlier we have only one coil with the center tapping that is a, in inside you have the difference of construct constructions so primary coil is excited by an ac voltage which may be varying 5 kilohertz to 20 kilohertz it is decided uh, by the frequency of the input signal the now input signal is here it is given to the core that is our that is the displacement input signal is given to the core to this extension rod at the extension rod whatever the displacement we want to measure we give it to the rod so the core will be moving so uh, now assuming the core is at the middle now we find the inductance mutual inductance between primary coil and secondary coils are uh, when it is middle they are same that is mutual inductance here inductance between this primary coil and uh, say secondary coil one we call mutual inductance so m1 and similarly the mutual inductance between the primary coil and uh, coil 2 we call m2 mutual inductance 2 so proportional to mutual inductance voltage is developed here that voltage suppose we call it as eo1 is equal to m1 times dip that is current flow in that is ip current flow in primary coil by dt the rate of current flow uh, into m1 will give the um, voltage developed in the secondary coil 1 similarly S2 is equal to SO EO2, EO2 that is voltage developed in the secondary coil 2 is equal to mutual inductance M2 into DIP by DT. Now these two coils as we see they are connected in, uh, in uh, uh, opposition, yeah? polarity opposition. So we find the net voltage uh, appearing between these two coils is the difference between these two voltages. So EO is equal to EO1 minus EO2 is equal to um, uh, DIP by DT into M1 minus M2. This is, this is the voltage developed uh, at the terminal of the um, uh, secondary, uh, se secondary coils. The terminals connecting secondary coils output voltage is proportional to this. Now when we change the displacement, it is, suppose the D is 0 that is the core is at the middle then you will find m1 is equal to m2 and m1 is equal to m2 eo is 0 eo is 0 now when we give a displacement suppose we move this core towards uh, s1 suppose we move in this direction then you will find mutual inductance m1 is more and uh, m2 is small so you will find uh, um, uh, eo1 is uh, larger than eo2 that difference between these two things will appear suppose es is of this nature then EO1, so, so EO when XA is positive, suppose you call this as positive this direction or we, we can also assume as per the diagram, let us assume here and uh, yeah, it, it does not matter, we can have it same direction. So if this is positive, if we define the towards left is positive, then you will find uh, the SO1, it will be somewhat like this, if a voltage developed EO will be somewhat in phase with the uh, supply voltage. Suppose we move the other side from the, the other side uh, towards right, then if we, if it is uh, from neutral position, it is a negative moment considering the uh, left hand motion as positive. This is a negative motion and you will find in this case S2, mutual inductance between primary coil and S2 is more. So you will find voltage developed in EO2 is larger, EO2 will be larger than EO1, then you will have the 180 degree phase shift that is this way. When XA is negative, then you will find the output voltage will be opposite that is 180 degree phase shift will be there that is what is shown at this point you will have 180 degree phase shift phase shift that is uh, the uh, the uh, rms value of eo if you consider you will find when x increase positive the output voltage is increasing eo and uh, with 20 degree phase shift it also increases the other directions other direction that is when x is negative this is x is negative and it is moving in this direction suppose we withdraw it completely you find then nonlinearity starts 
So within the uh, dimensions of the uh, pickup only, you are supposed to move the core. That is why it is called uh, a linear range, linear range for the operation. So that is how the, uh, uh, the, uh, the linear variable differential transformer construction is there and it is functioning. But if you see the signal flow diagram, you can see the uh, Xi when it is uh, that is displacement given to the core and it is given to the core of the LVDT. And uh, we have the uh, excitation voltage uh, that is for the primary coil, we have the excitation voltage that is taken from the oscillator which may supply any voltage from any frequency be between 5 and 20 kilohertz and this is this rate depending upon the input signal frequency. The carrier frequency, the oscillator frequency should be at least 10 times the maximum frequency of the input signal, the frequency with which we, we are going to change the input signal. So depending upon that we can select the frequency in the oscillator. So that uh, signal is uh, given to primary and the output voltage EO will be pre the frequency of this, I mean magnitude of the uh, input signal uh, is superimposed over the uh, carrier signal and you got so called modulated, uh, modulated uh, voltage is obtained as the output from the secondary coils. Suppose uh, we, the motion is only on one side of the neutral, neutral positions. Suppose the motion is only uh, the, uh, at the right hand side of this neutral position. Then we need not have this sophisticated instrumentation. That is phase sensitive demodulator, filter and all is not required because the average value of the modulated signal alone can be read in a AC voltmeter. Yeah. In AC voltmeter that will give the RMS value that is proportional to the uh, displacement what we have given. But uh, suppose motion takes place on both sides, both sides of the neutral position that is it moves to and fro like this. What is given is positive motion, positive side that is this side it motion and the other side also it goes. Then, then you will find the if you use only AC voltmeter the direction will not be known. In such cases we take the EO and give it to phase sensitive demodulator uh, where again with the synchronous signal from oscillator it, uh, it brings these waves to the same side of the signal and uh, after low pass filter you get a voltage output proportional to the displacement what you have given. And that can be calibrated in terms of known distances and unknown distances can be read from the meter. So that is signal flow diagram of a LVDT. We, we have to note here important point is in instrumentation for LVDT there is no bridge network. Only for inductive pickup there is bridge network and uh, LVDT we need a, we hear, uh, one more point we do not have even the amplifier because if it is sufficient uh, magnitude we can simply without amplifier we can get few volts. 2 or 3 volts that can be calibrated in terms of displacements. So there is no amplifier in some instances. If you want you can add amplifier here also if this small hole you can add but that is not a must and uh, main point is there is no bridge network in the instrumentation for the LVDT. So this is for linear motion yeah, uh, along a line Xi is that is displacement along a line when, uh, when it is in the uh, suppose it is, uh, it is pivoted you can give the motion uh, uh, rotary motion also. Hence it is called rotary variable differential transformer. We give this angular rotation to this, this again magnetic core, magnetic core. Same construction um, uh, uh, arrived, I mean um, made uh, along an arc. So this is primary coil P, this is S1, this is S2, same way it functions. But here the displacement, the, uh, dis, uh, the angular rotation is given to the um, LVDT, hence it is called rotary variable. Transfer, otherwise, the functioning is same principle as that one. So that is regarding the mutual inductance. Now the uh, we, um, uh, the uh, reluctance variations, reluctance, reluctance variations. That is third way, third way of using variation. Third way of using the inductance is um, uh, you uh, um, uh, change the. Uh, um, uh, resistance for the uh, magnetic line uh, to the flow of magnetic lines that is what is achieved in microsin. The specific name here is microsin or it is sometime it is called proximity pickup in some other construction that is second construction. So in the reluctance variations is achieved by this yeah, uh, like this. So there is a rotor which can make a rotation theta that is our input signal Xi. Yeah. When it rotates we find the resistance for the magnetic magnetic lines for one line is shown one or two lines are shown here. 
So the magnetic lines are induced on the poles. Poles 1, 2, 3, 4 poles are there in the stator. And there is excitation coil. This is your excitation winding. This is excitation. Excitation winding is shown here as a yellow line. And uh, each pole has got excitation winding as well as the uh, secondary winding. So the excitation winding is similar to our uh, primary coil in the LVDT. And the, uh, the uh, secondary winding, um, as it is shown there, is shown here by, uh, say, green line. So each pole has got excitation coil and the secondary coil. So the through, because the excitation coil, the uh, magnetic lines are induced. And uh, that um, uh, path is shown here. So that is now, if suppose the uh, rotor is in the neutral position, then you will find rotor material that is shown here. This is rotor material is distributed equally to each uh, among all the four poles. Half of the each pole is covered by the rotor material. Rotor material is made up of again magnetic material. It is made up of magnetic material. So magnetic material equally distributed among the four poles. So number of lines produced because of this, uh, because of this you find the reluctance of each against each uh, pole is also same in the neutral position. So the number of lines um, in each pole is same. So north pole so is here, north pole, north pole, south pole, south pole. So you'll find uh, two lines, probably two lines here, two lines there, and two lines entering here, two lines entering here. So you'll find the number of lines entering or coming out of each pole will be same for the neutral position of the rotor. Suppose it rotates uh, to a small angle. Now normally here theta i is uh, varied plus or minus say 15 degrees. Only small angle rotation is possible to convert that into uh, displacement signal into rotary uh, this rot rotation of plus or 15 degrees can be converted into an equivalent voltage here. So if suppose we rotate um, towards say um, uh, anti-clockwise, suppose we rotate anti-clockwise through say few degrees, say 5 degrees, then you will find material comes here more. That is poles 1 and 3, you will have more material and here it will, uh, it will withdraw. So you'll have two and four. You have less material. That means uh, the uh, more number of uh, lines are there in uh, pole one and uh, three, and less number of line in two and four. Now the secondary coils are bound in such a way. Uh, the um, uh, coils one and three they add, they add each other, and two and four they sub the two and four also in connected series, but uh, in in combination it will oppose one and three voltage. That is uh, similar to our secondary coil. So one coil is made up of uh, the winding one and three. The second primary, uh, second uh, secondary coil will be made up of uh, the two and four, and they will be the voltage developed in these secondary coils will be opposed will be opposition will oppose each other. So when they are connected in series, all of them, then you will find the two in two adding two um, subtracting net voltage is supply is uh, is appearing here. So you find uh, uh, pro, uh, in um, um, that is a uh, one and three uh, voltage is in, in increase and two and three because whenever they change in uh, when when there is change in magnetic lines and they interact with the secondary coil they indu they induce voltage that's how the voltage is induced in the second secondary coils and one and three they aid each other two and four aid each other but in opposite to the polarity of one and three so net voltage is coming here as it is in LVDT but what you have made use of is the reluctance, since more magnetic path, uh, more magnetic material is brought, reluctance reduced uh, in 1 and 3. At the same time, reluctance is increased in 2 and 4. So it is opposite effect producing 2 one pair. Uh, uh, increase one pair and the other pair of poles, uh, the reluctance is increased. That is what is made use of uh, here to convert that rot rotary motion into, uh, into voltage. So this again, you can uh, as per the signal flow diagram as LVDT, we can uh, give this. This is this is a modulated signal. We can uh, amplify it if you want, or you can give it a phase sensitive demodulator and then low pass filter. Same instrumentation, low pass filter, and then finally you have the voltage output. Yeah, that part of it I have not shown. This is one way of using the reluctance reluctance variation. Another one is simply called proximity pickup. Yeah, it's well known. And the construction is you have got a north pole, south pole, a magnet, permanent magnet, on which there is a coil wound over. And uh, suppose a gear is uh, just below the in the, or in the vicinity of the uh, of this uh, device, 
at one instant say a tooth comes just off just behind uh, just below the uh, uh, this uh, arrangement then you will find this is this made up of magnetic material yeah this is made up of magnetic material again magnetic material so you will find uh, the uh, since uh, mag presence uh, presence of magnetic material induces more uh, more uh, more uh, magnetic lines in this uh, um, so let us have the north pole here this south pole so more magnetic magnetic lines will be coming out of the north pole in the presence of a magnetic material and uh, immediately as it rotates immediately you will find uh, you will find a valley then reluctance is reluctance is increase the number of lines will decrease so that is that means when a tooth and valley passes in front of this uh, um, permanent magnet you find number of lines changes uh, when the number of lines changes then you will find uh, that is cutting the number of the coils will induce a voltage here so whenever a tooth comes out you find one pulse is produced that show you get a pulse output from the proximity pickup proximity pickup is made up of a permanent magnet on which we have got a coil so the coil in the coil you have the voltage induced and uh, if in a uh, so 100 number of uh, 100 teeth are there then in one rotation you have the 100 pulses it can be read in an electronic voltmeter uh, and uh, an electronic um, counter and uh, you can uh, uh, divide by 1000 100 means you may you have so many rotations that is how the electrons may disappear here to uh, uh, to in measuring the rotary motions of the uh, any magnetic material now we see the third element we have seen the resistance inductance how they are made use of our displacement uh, transducer now we see how the capacitance made use of to transduce a displacement into a voltage now we know in a capacitance uh, normally we go we go for the parallel plate uh, type of capacitors so having two parallel plates they are, they are uh, having a distance of d and uh, say a distance uh, this is distance in millimeter and the area is millimeter square millimeter square then the capacitance the uh, assuming a um, dielectric constant uh, a dielectric medium say air air is equal to 1.006 uh, something like that for air so some uh, dielectric medium is there so the capacitance of such a parallel plate capacitor is given by this expression 0 0.0086 epsilon dielectric constant area is the common area between the two plates and d being the dis distance uh, in millimeter and millimeter square respectively that means capacitance is depending upon three parameters dielectric medium the plate area and the distance between the plates so if we can give the displacement to vary any one of these parameters then capacitance will vary that is the principle what is made use of in these three types of capacitors capacitors because same displacement you can give it to in three ways this is the op this is the option available for the uh, for uh, option available for the designer when he wants to design a capacitance transducer for distance uh, to convert the distance into dis, uh, into voltage he can have any one of these three designs for example here uh, the distance d is varied by having one plate fixed and giving the displacement to uh, the other plate xi the input signal as displacement we gives then d is varied when d is varied and inversely you have got the a variation in the capacitance and the capacitance will be made into some circuit which we will see little later uh, the other way of uh, using the d is uh, you have a some um, uh, dielectric medium some mica or some material uh, um, an insulating material they are good uh, uh, dielectric materials so some mica is there and it is put to some uh, initial position like that we can move either this way or the other way then you will find the actual in this position half of the volume is made up of air other volume is made up of mica so when you move it then the moves towards say left then the medium air medium is reduced and mica is more and you will find the epsilon is increased so similarly you will find when you give different displacement epsilon is varied and epsilon is varied proportionately capacitance is varied so similarly here we find the common area suppose this is the normal uh, middle position that is this point is just middle middle of this uh, other plate then you can move uh, the one way is we can call it positive the other direction it's negative so it will produce the opposite effects suppose if you move here a will be increased the capacitance is increased the move the other side uh, then capacitance reduced since a is reduced so from middle position we can increase or decrease and accordingly the distance from zero either positive side negative side you can make use of 
So these are three ways, either varying the distance between the plates or varying the uh, dielectric constants or varying the common area, we can convert the distance into capacitance. Now how capacitance is made use of in a circuit to get a voltage, that, we, that is explained in this simple circuit. The capacitor, uh, parallel plate capacitor is, for, is forming uh, one of the elements in the circuit with resistance. So this is your uh, supply voltage Eb. And now it is um, for deriving an expression, it is assumed like this. At any instant, let the distance between the two plates be x. And um, uh, we are giving the distance input signal to uh, this other plate, bottom plate. Now when x is 0, well, let us call x as x0. Yeah. So at any instant, x, x, is equal, x equal to x i plus x0. At any instant, x, x, x0 is the when uh, displays, when we, when we do not give any uh, any uh, any input signal x i, so that is x o. So x o plus x i will be at any time x or you can write x i is equal to x minus x o. And uh, we can derive an a, a expression if e o is the voltage drop across the resistance r, then we can uh, e o is the output vol that is e o, voltage uh, drop across r is our, our out output voltage e o. And e o and the x i, the uh, plate displacement x i input signal. Under these definitions, we can derive this equation in electrical technology, where where k I mean k to d by the time constant to one plus to d, where k is equal to E b minus that is excitation voltage, that circuit uh, supply voltage divided by the x o when x i is zero, whatever the distance is x o, that is volt per millimeter you will have. Then uh, x i already we have seen to is equal to time constant C o, that is this will have its capacitance when x is at x o or x i is equal to 0, C o into r will give the time constant for the circuit. So in, the, in that terms, you have got this uh, relation and uh, when you want to find out the frequency response of this equation, normally we what we do is substitute the differential operator d by i omega. So the, uh, by substituting by i omega, you have got this equation which gives rise to magnitude ratio and the phase angle like this. This you can reduce this to this form and uh, that is when omega is equal to 0, this is 0, e o by a is k, that is when omega is equal to 0, then you find e o by, e o by x i magnitude, that is i omega uh, will be k, that is magnitude ratio of e o to x i will be k, that is 0, when it is, uh, when it is 0, when it is 0, this is, yeah, when omega is 0, this becomes infinity, then when it becomes infinity, then you will find uh, k by infinity will be 0, that is why you have got 0 voltage. Suppose omega is infinity, uh, then this term will become 0, then you will find uh, e o by x i will be same as k, that is, uh, that is how when omega becomes infinity, the curve approaches the value of k, that is how the magnitude e o varies with reference to omega. Similarly, you will find uh, the when uh, omega uh, omega is 0, it is uh, uh, phi, phi will be pi, by, that is this uh, infinity. 10 minus 1 infinity, that 5 will be 10, 5, 10 90 is uh, infinity. Uh, so you have got 90 degrees, 10, uh, 10 pi by 2 infinity. So when omega is equal to infinity, this will be 0, then times 0, it becomes 0. So that is how the angle, uh, angle is varying. Now that means when omega is uh, very large, omega is very large, then only that uh, uh, EO is proportional, K means EO is proportional to K. Suppose EO by e o by x i is equal to k, that means it is a constant and you will find k into x i, it is taking that, that side. So output voltage is proportional to k, is proportional to x i only when omega is larger than say omega minimum, assuming a 5 percent error. So this if you can say 0 0.95, 0 0.95 times k, 5 percent error in this instrumentation, then you will find uh, assuming uh, uh, making this, this side will become 0 0.95, 5 percent error this side will become 0 0.95, then you will find omega minimum, yeah, that is we can also write e o by k, e o by k that is making it into 1, you can also write this as 1 bringing e o by k by x i i omega and making it for, pi, for 5 percent error the ratio will be 0 0.95 then you have got omega minimum, omega minimum is equal to uh, point, uh, uh, 3.04 by 2. So if substitute uh, in this equation, then omega minimum you get as 3.04 over 2. 
So the for higher value of omega, omega uh, being more than omega minimum, then you will find the error is always less than 5 percent or it will more than 0.95 the magnitude ratio. In order to have omega minimum as small as possible, what, what is the uh, requirement? Tau should be larger. To make omega minimum uh, la smaller, so that if uh, even we can use this instrumentation for smaller uh, frequency of what is omega? Omega is the frequency at which we uh, at which we give vary the uh, input signal. That is the uh, input signal variation. Frequency is omega. So if you have lesser omega minimum, then at even at lower frequency we can measure it. Also, we have to note when omega is zero, that is static measurement. When they, they, we just move it and keep it there, that is no omega. Omega is zero, no frequency. That is under static measurement, we see output voltage is zero. So the simple uh, circuit with the capacitor, you cannot use it for uh, static measurements. So only for dynamic measurements, and dynamic frequency should be more than so 3.04 over tau for 5 percent error. If you vary the percentage error, then accordingly you can find out. Suppose 2 percent error means you put 0 0.98, 2 percent error. If you allow only 1 percent, 0.99. For that, what is the omega minimum you can find out? But 5 percent error is normally allowed. So having 5 percent error, omega minimum so much. So in order to reduce, uh, in order to have as small value for omega minimum as possible, then you should have the as large tau as possible. Now what is tau? Tau is equal to CO times R. That is capacitance at uh, Z, uh, X is 0 and the other one is R. So normally having larger R, we can reduce omega minimum. So R is of the order of so some mega ohm, 1 or 2 mega ohm. The problem here is uh, we have reduced omega minimum, but the voltmeter which we bring to read this voltage will have 10 times this. So it should be 10 omega. 10 mega ohm should be the resistance of the voltmeter. So that is how it is a high impedance circuit. To convert it, we go for the impedance transforming amplifier. So uh, by that, we convert this high impedance circuit into low impedance circuit and later on you can connect a voltmeter. That is the usage of the impedance transforming circuit. In, tra in the transducers uh, using capacitance and uh, piezoelectric transducers, uh, we make use of the um, uh, impedance transform amplifier like that. So the uh, simple circuit with one capacitor has got this drawback. It cannot be used for static measurement. If you want to use the capacitor for the static measurement, then we go for the bridge circuits with the capacitors, AC bridge circuits with the capacitors. That such three constructions are shown here in this figure. That is, uh, capacitance is varied uh, by uh, varying the distance between the between the two uh, between the two plates of the parallel plate capacitor or by changing the epsilon, uh, that is the uh, dielectric constants, or by varying the area. This is area variation. Here it is uh, epsilon variation. Here it is d variation, distance variations. But they are connected in adjacent terms of the Wheatstone bridge. This is a Wheatstone, this is AC bridge. Uh, it is uh, drawn in a diamond construction. It is a different way it is drawn. Two across two corners, you find the output voltage. The other two corners, you give excitation. Same circuit, in different way it is drawn. Whenever we give a display, suppose we give the displacement here, x i, uh, then we will find the distance here is reduced, the distance the other capacitor C1 is increased. Accordingly, the capacitance vary, and for the change in capacitance, we will have the one given output voltage. Similarly, here we find the, uh, the, uh, the dielectric medium, say mica, is moved from this middle position this way or that way. Accordingly, the epsilon is varied, correspondingly the uh, varied in, uh, in adjacent terms. They are, they are connected in adjacent terms. For any given variation, the variation in C on C2 will be opposite in nature. Similarly, by, by having a cylindrical construction for the plate, we, this is uh, cylinder 1, cylinder 2, and this is a, um, uh, a rod having a um, uh, common area, common area equal in both now to start with. Later on, one, if you move right, right hand side, C2 will increase area, C1 will reduce. So they are connected again as adjacent terms of a, of a AC bridge with the excitation and so forth. So the output voltage, we know it is a modulator, uh, modulator one, we can amplify it and then uh, phase sensitive demodulator, low pass filter, all these things are understood. These things I am not doing it. It is uh, by using carry frequency amplifier, we can read the output voltage corresponding to this. So this one construction. Another construction uh, where static signal can be studied is a capacitance uh, with operational amplifier. Yeah? We have got uh, two capacitance, one is in the forward line, other is uh, feedback path C2 capacitor. And uh, now the, suppose ES is the, uh, ES is the supply voltage, then EO is equal to EO of this. Uh, EO 
E O is given by uh, E O is equal to E O is equal to uh, C minus C 1 by C 2 E S that is E O the output voltage of this uh, setup that is operational amplifier with a uh, feedback capacitor and then it is going to phase sense demodulator, low pass filter, finally you get the output voltage. The output voltage is varied depending upon the variation in C1 and C2. You can select the variations, either you can put the variation in C1 or C2 because you find uh, this um, uh, Z2 by, now actually EO is equal to Z2 by Z1, Z2 by Z1. Uh, this is giving rise to impedance of Z2, this impedance of Z1. Now we know impedance is equal to 1 over C omega, this is our impedance, comma, impedance of capacitor C is equal to Z by 1 by C omega. So now since it is inversely proportionate, you will find a uh, minus C1 by C2, Es, because Z1 is inversely proportional to C1, so it goes up. Now we know each one is made up of these three parameters. The now uh, this this is equal to C1 is equal to epsilon is proportionate to is proportionate to epsilon one uh, a1 by d1, and uh, similarly C2 you got epsilon two a2 or d2. Yeah, because uh, capacitance is uh, uh, epsilon proportional to uh, area uh, into uh, into dielectric constant divided by the distance. So uh, converting that in terms of parameters. Now, if we have the area has changed, area change you give because we want EO proportionate to pro proportional quantity, then we give area as well as the dielectric constant variation in capacitor 1, this capacitor 1. We want to vary area to change the uh, capacitance, then give it to capacitance 1. And when you want to give the uh, distance as input signal uh, to vary the capacitance, then that distance give it to capacitance 2 that D2 comes up at the top. So you will find EO is proportional to D2. So we can uh, give the uh, signal in uh, signal in form of displacement between the plates or the common area between the plates or the uh, dielectric constant. Um, for that, we can select uh, any one of these two capacitors. That is for uh, area and uh, dielectric constant capacitor 1, distance we give to capacitance 2. Then you will have EO always proportionate to our displacement signal. So that is what is uh, uh, demonstrated by this equation. That means we have seen uh, all the three passive elements, resistance, inductance, and capa capacitance, how they are made use of to transduce a displacement into a corresponding voltage.